If I want you staring at me like a slack-jawed idiot, I'll ask. Otherwise, keep your eyes averted. Show some respect. She pushed down on his nose until he dipped his chin. She continued pushing until his chin almost touched his chest and he had to lower his eyes to the floor. His face turned beet red and she could see his eyes darting around as he struggled with his situation. Shit, he thought. She has my money and now she tells me I can't even look at her, talk to her. What the hell's going on? This is nuts. Screw this. I don't need this kind of crazy. You know what? I uh, changed my mind. Why don't you give me my money back and I'll be out of here in a flash? Sorry for any misunderstanding. He boldly raised his head, looked her directly in the eyes, and gave his winning smile for all it was worth. Her eyes widened in shock. He didn't think he'd said anything odd, especially compared to the way she'd been with him, but she looked shocked regardless. She folded his money and pressed it into the front pocket of her jeans. They were so tight he could see the bills outlined when her hand moved away. She tapped her slender fingers on the pocket lightly. There, all safe and secure. What the hell? Didn't she hear me? What's she doing with my money? He was anxious at her ignoring what he'd said, but his mind kept imagining those slender fingers tapping on the head of his cock instead of her pocket. His eyes shifted over and drank in the sight of her pussy lips, perfectly accentuated by the denim rolling over one lip than the other caressing them with its rough kiss, leaving nothing to the imagination. She took a breath, her face relaxing as she shook her head slightly, looking at him almost with pity. I realize this is your first night, and as such, I'd like to forget all about that little outburst of yours. However, rules are rules. How can I expect you to respect them if I don't show you how important they are to me? She asked, pursing her lips and raising her eyebrow at him. Look, I get it, you have rules, he said as he tried to focus. He was having trouble. Those lips were full, moist, her eyes still pools of self-assurance that seemed to see right inside him. No, no, I don't think you do, she said, turning to bend down and grasp the handles of the drawer. Pulling it all the way open, she straightened up and turned back to face him, blowing an errant strand of hair out of her face. He wasn't sure what she was doing, but watching her blow the hair out of her face, the way her lips moved as she pushed the air over them was a distraction he didn't need. She pointed at the foot of the bed. You can put your bag down there and sort yourself out tomorrow. He didn't think anything of it and set his bag where she'd pointed, then faced her. Wait, man, what are you doing? He shook his head, realizing he'd gotten caught up in the sight of her. Oh, you sucker. Grab your shit, put that Irish pussy out of your head, and get out of here. He was turning to get his things when she spoke, her lilting voice sliding over him with a cold edge of finality. Not loud, not forceful. It was as if it was a conversation about the weather. Get in your box. Come on, is she serious? He thought. He faced her. Look, lady, first of all, it's only six o'clock, and secondly, I already told you this was a mistake. Just give me my money and I'll be out of here. She stared at him. He held her gaze for a second, then his eyes wavered and he looked away. She felt the hook slipping in, and she knew she had only to set it. She walked over to him and gently but firmly grabbed his chin and moved her face to within inches from his. You had a chance to reflect on what living here would be like, and you made your choice. She looked down at his lips, mere inches from her own. You came back. You gave me your money. You accepted the contract. Now, do not make me repeat myself. Get in your box.